Hello and welcome to Take 53. I'm your host, Carol Frausto. Today I will be joined by Robert Quinlan. He is the recently retired Cupertino City Manager. Coming up, we'll talk about his future plans as well as his impact on Cupertino. So please stay tuned for Take 53. Lured by the dream of owning your own small business? Being your own boss? Reality got you startled? Customers passing you by? We're SCORE, a service corps of retired executives. Call us at 1-800-237-GROW oh, yeah. to get your hands on our free small business success kit. It'll help make your dreams come true. That's 1-800-237-GROW. Every tooth in a man's head is more valuable to him than a diamond. Cervantes wrote that in Don Quixote nearly four centuries ago. It was common then for people to lose their teeth as they grew older. Fortunately, dentistry has come a long way. Today, with proper care, your teeth should last as long as you do. All it takes is a healthy diet, daily brushing and flossing, and regular visits to your dentist. More valuable than a diamond, something to think about. Welcome back to Take 53. I'm Carol Frausto. Today we will talk with a man who has spent the last 17 years working as Cupertino's city manager. We'll discuss his recent retirement and the changes he's seen in Cupertino over the last decade. I'd like to introduce my guest, Mr. Robert Quinlan. Thanks Thank you, for Kim. joining me. Thank you. You're recently retired. And it seems like that must be a real difficult type of transition going from working into retirement. Um, what are you seeing as some of the activities that you'll pursue now that you are retired? Well, I hope to uh, look for some opportunities in the private sector, but I'm also uh, uh, submitted my name to work with Public service, uh, Services Skills, and this is a nonprofit organization that uh, uh, kind of assists cities in getting are obtaining uh, interim city managers, uh, interim budget directors, uh, whatever, mm -hmm. department head type of activities on a, uh, a very short-term basis while they're seeking or they're in between city managers or, or department heads. Um, thought about doing some of that. I also uh, want to do some volunteer work. I see. What type of volunteer work are you interested well, in? Well, I've already uh, agreed to serve on the uh, YMCA board here. I uh, agreed to serve on a uh, uh, committee for De Anza College, and uh, uh, there's some other opportunities I'm looking at now. Now, the, the serves is that a national organization, or is it a no, California-based? No, no, it's, it's a, a California-based organization, I and see. it's been very successful. It started about uh, eight or nine years ago, and they've had a great deal of success with it, and it's been very helpful to cities that needed mm -hmm. someone in between, uh, in between department heads or managers, mm -hmm. uh, especially smaller communities. Find that need. Cupertino's been pretty successful in finding the, a, repla a new city manager. Well, in our particular case, of course, I, I announced uh, to the council that I would want to retire. Uh, I, I announced to them in July that I would mm -hmm. be retiring in December, so mm -hmm. uh, to give them plenty of opportunity to uh, seek a replacement. So uh, we will have Mr. Bert Viscovich, however, uh, the director of public works, acting as uh, interim manager until such time as the new city manager comes on board, which is around February 1st, I understand. I see. Now, what type of opportunities are you looking for in the private sector? Well, I uh, really haven't made up my mind. There's just mm -hmm. uh, various opportunities. I have a couple friends of mine who, uh, one, one uh, uh, city manager retired a couple of years ago, for instance, is the business manager of a, uh, or is the manager, general manager of a business park oh. in uh, Contra Costa County. So, uh, just not sure yet. Mm -hmm. But just whatever opportunity comes There's along with, with the expertise, you know, that I've developed. Mm -hmm. There's got to be some leisure activities in there somewhere. I plan to play a little golf and tennis, which are my hobbies. And, of course, my wife and I want to do a little traveling. And uh, we haven't had much opportunity over the years. Mm -hmm. And also to uh, spend a little time with our grandkids. So. That's great. That's great. Now, you know that recently, um, you've probably heard that recently the Santa Clara retired city manager Don von Reisfeld. Yes. He ran for a position in, on the city council for the That's city like of Santa Clara. Do you have any plans? Are you interested in anything like that? Not for running for his council, no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I really don't. Uh, of course, you know, uh, several years from now, who knows, but I, mm -hmm. but, uh, I certainly don't have any intention now or, or in the future, really. Mm -hmm. But you're really well established in Cupertino. Yes, we plan to stay here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, having, let's see, 
I was curious as how do you first got involved in working in public service? Well, actually, I started out, I, uh, I received my master's, University of Kansas, uh, and uh, at a time when uh, there weren't too many people in the field that were getting master's degrees, but uh, it was directed towards city management. Um, and there were about, oh, I don't know, not over three or four schools in the whole country that had that uh, specific a program. At the time, my intentions actually were to develop some um, experience and uh, uh, knowledge of, of management and administration that would help me in the private sector. I really hadn't planned to stay in the public sector all these years, uh, but obviously I've enjoyed it or I wouldn't have been in it that long. Mm -hmm. Where did you get your your first start working in the public? I started as a as an assistant to the city manager in Enid, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and was there a couple of years. And then uh, I got the city manager job at uh, age 26 uh, in Midwest City, Oklahoma, and then from there I went to Boulder, Colorado, and from Boulder to Beloit, Wisconsin, and then finally to Cupertino. What brought you out to California? Loved uh, the climate. I loved this area in particular. Uh, there were uh, a lot of opportunities for uh, city managers in the area. Uh, in California cities. has a number of, uh, not only a number of cities, but uh, the uh, council manager government is the uh, predominant uh, uh, type of government in California. So there was a lot of opportunity. I see. When we come back, we'll find out what it's like to work as a city manager in Cupertino. Get up. Oh, Safety oh, belt oh. test at nine. Hurry. Not another windshield taste test. Count me out. What? The old pro backing down from a motor home? Nothing like that. I'm just tired of trying to convince people to wear safety belts. No one's listening. Safety belt saved Barbara Mandrell. You're right. Someone listen. Let's hit the road. You hungry, partner? Ah, let's do some donuts on the way in. Good idea. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Understanding begins with communication. But communication is hard when you put up walls. You might think you're safe behind those walls, but you're not safe. You're just alone. Walls that keep your feelings inside keep love and understanding out. It doesn't have to be that way. Communicate. Open the door. Let love and understanding in. And we're back on Take 53. I'm Carol Frausto here with recently retired Cupertino City Manager Robert Quinlan. We're going to talk about some of the growth and changes in Cupertino. I know that um, I've had this misunderstanding that I think a lot of people do, that they don't really understand the, how the hierarchy works in local government. Could you just tell us how the, the role of the city manager is and especially what your relationship is with the city council? Sure. Uh, actually, the council manager government, uh, mayor council manager government, uh, got started back in the early 1900s, and it was kind of a takeoff from uh, the private sector uh, board of directors and uh, a chairman. Uh, of course, the principal difference is that the, uh, you don't have stock except what property you own in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, the council is elected directly. And it can be elected in several manner. It can be elected at large. It can be elected uh, by district or half and half. Uh, there's many setups for that particular arrangement. And it depends on state law in uh, the particular state uh, that the city is in. Uh, the city manager is appointed by the council and serves at their pleasure, uh, either under a contract or uh, just at their pleasure from uh, meeting to meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the city manager, in turn, normally has the authority to hire uh, and fire uh, the staff uh, that uh, he or she's authorized to um, uh, employ to operate uh, that particular community. So really, the, the manager's chore is to uh, carry out the policy uh, adopted by the city council, mm -hmm. uh, who in turn, of course, is elected by the people. The manager's role uh, is often confused because of the very close communications that the manager should have with the city council. Uh, the council, uh, although it does adopt policy, because the manager uh, is there every day as well as uh, the staff, uh, they obviously will see from time to time needs in change in policy. So they're uh, 
apt to recommend policy changes. And from that, of course, the council has a final say and, and does adopt uh, the policy. Uh, but the manager should, um, uh, in most cases, I think, feel free to, to recommend policy. But it's kind of like a uh, policeman presenting his case to the judge. Uh, once he's presented the case, it's the judge's decision then as to uh, what will happen. And that's uh, just as it is the council's decision what happens to policy. Also, the council originates policy, so it's not a it's not a one-way street by any stretch of imagination, and it does require good close communication between the council and the manager and his staff. Do you think that um, this type of communication can be um, too close at times in this type of a setup? Maybe that people may say the city manager is a puppet of the council. That type of communication, if it's too close, that you can't differentiate between your recommendations to them? Well, uh, I suppose, I think, it, I think it all, it's all an appearance. Uh, actually, it's the other way around normally. The complaint mm -hmm. you hear is that the council is the puppet of the manager. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think when that happens, sometimes it's a case of where the uh, city manager's role has changed a little bit and uh, he or she has taken a lot of a uh, has a stronger public face, if you will, mm -hmm. than the council. And I think it uh, behooves any manager to realize that the manager's role is one of uh, administration, primarily, recommending policy only to get the job done in a better manner for the, for the community. Uh, but it's, it's the, the, the um, publicity, the public appearances belong primarily in the public sector belong to the council of the policy makers mm -hmm. and i think that uh, that's the important aspect of it and i think you see that a lot because i think a lot of times as an example with the city of san jose their mayor is very out in the forefront you don't mm -hmm. hear very much about the city manager mm -hmm. that does the, you know works mm -hmm. with that and I think that happens a lot mm -hmm. in that type of a setup. How are our city council members elected in Cupertino? They're elected at large. At large? Mm -hmm. Is it by district? No, that's being at large that means mm -hmm. they're not by district. Uh -huh. uh, the, uh, we have five on the council. Uh, there are three elected uh, uh, for a four-year period and then uh, the following two years, uh, there's two elected for a four-year period, so there's always a three-two kind of combination. Uh, the mayor is selected uh, by the council. It does not run di uh, directly for mayor in Cupertino. That can be done, but that has not been the case in Cupertino. Were any of those council members here originally when you first came to Cupertino? They were on the council now. Mm -hmm. No. No. Mm -hmm. So they weren't the ones that originally uh, hired you. No, no. That's uh, the ones that originally hired me are. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the members uh, lives in uh, right outside Boston, in Massachusetts now, and another one of the members lives in uh, uh, Southern California somewhere, I'm not sure where, and uh, another one lives in Los Alamos Hills, and by the way, he's on the Planning Commission now for the city of Los Alamos Hills, and just recently got back into government service. The others live in the, in the immediate area. That's another area you could probably explore, isn't it, the planning area of of city government. Yes, but I'm not sure that uh, it would be a good thing for me or the community mm -hmm. uh, to try to get back in this quick. I think that's, you know, I need to do some other things mm -hmm. and uh, and I think it would be really at the best interest of both the city and myself to kind of stay away from government for at least our hard. government. It's probably our gonna government be hard to see it's the It's very changes. difficult. I still find myself uh, uh, reading the newspaper very closely <laughs> and, and getting my eye up when I see something that's <laughs> going on that I'm not particularly pleased at or on a mm -hmm. countywide basis or whatever. Because mm -hmm. so you're very involved in, as far as uh, City Managers Association. Um, yes. Is that nationally? Yeah, well I was involved. Uh, uh, it's, we have an organization uh, called the ICMA, it's the International City Management Association. I was involved in that. But more directly involved in the state associations. I was uh, president of uh, of each city manager association, each state I served in, in, in Oklahoma and, and Colorado and Wisconsin and then Cupertino. So um, I've been very, um, very fortunate in that respect mm -hmm. for the uh, peers to recognize me in that regard. And that's probably very um, highly visible. It's very, well, uh, it is at the time. It's a, it's a, it's very rewarding. And there's some, uh, some work involved to it too. It wouldn't, wouldn't be that rewarding. 
Over the last 17 years, you've certainly had a significant impact on Cupertino. What do you see as some of the city's greatest accomplishments as you were city manager under your guidance? Well, uh, first of all, let me kind of back up here. I, the question or the statement kind of implies that it's that it was me. Uh, it's it's a team effort, and mm -hmm. it, I think it's extremely important to bring that point out because uh, no one person can accomplish any particular thing with government. Uh, uh, it's it's a council, it's a city manager, it's a staff, and it's the people in the community mm -hmm. uh, that work together to to gain whatever uh, there is to be gained in that particular community. And with that definition, then. Uh, I think uh, we have a balanced community. That was something that was uh, started well before I arrived on the scene. I think we maintained that balance. And uh, I think that's uh, a strong asset, will be a strong asset to our community in the future. Uh, communities seem to um, roll over uh, financially, economically, redevelopment-wise. Uh, uh, in a better continuity with more stability when you have a balanced community. Where, and by balance, I'm referring mm -hmm. to industrial, commercial, and residential. That's a, right. a balance between uses. And I think we have that type of community, and I think we've uh, held up very well uh, in the area uh, as a result. Uh, we have a reasonably good infrastructure. We've really made every effort to, that we could w within the financial ability we had to uh, keep our, our streets in good shape, uh, to uh, acquire parks and open space as we could, um, and to develop a physical stability in our community. Uh, uh, but I think one thing that probably I'm as proud of as anything is, is uh, a good staff development. We've, we've got a good staff with our city here. And I'm very proud of that. I think that's one of your trademarks from talking to you before that you want to work very much as a team right. as with your staff. And I think that's what makes working in the city that much more enjoyable. Well, I hope so. Mm -hmm. At least uh, we've had some pretty good stability with our staff, so mm -hmm. I hope that's the indication. What would you say, as a follow-up to my last question, has been some of your most enjoyable or one of your most enjoyable aspects as being city manager? Well, there's feeling, uh, you know, I've often thought about why did I decide to stay in this business as long as I did since I really didn't intend to to start with. I think, uh, I think there's a feeling uh, that, uh, that I obtained that was something I needed, and that is a feeling of being needed, a mm -hmm. feeling that the work I did was important. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, of course, people vary in those kinds of needs, and, uh, but that apparently was something that I needed very much and uh, was fulfilled mm -hmm. uh, as a city manager. I think that the type of position that you held is must be very fulfilling because it is the public service type job and you see the results from the decisions that your staff and you make. You see the changes in Cupertino, the things that you've put forth. And I, I think, think that's one of the advantages, by the way, of working in a city government as opposed to a state government or mm -hmm. to a national government is that you're closer to the what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, you. Uh, it's an advantage to see it. Uh, sometimes it's a disadvantage. You, you <laughs> see some things that uh, didn't come off so well and you regret uh, the decisions you made. Uh, and those things you have to live with, obviously. But uh, most part, uh, it's, a, it's a real good feeling. Mm -hmm. Being here for 17 years, you really were be able, able to see a lot of your projects followed through. And one of those things probably was Highway 85. <laughs> yes, although it's not there yet. Not uh, but I we, mean, you've seen a lot of the changes oh, yes. over the last 17 oh, yes. years. Yes, very much so. We've had a lot of uh, a lot of infilling, a lot of uh, development that has occurred. We tried to uh, to have a, a quality type of development, um, but uh, there's no question that uh, uh, 85 is something that's really near and dear to us, uh, especially in Cupertino, because mm -hmm. uh, it stopped in Cupertino, and uh, mm -hmm. and we had a, for we've had for many years a uh, problem with the commute traffic. Uh, uh, moving through neighborhood areas and, and making it difficult uh, for those neighborhoods. Could you, on another subject, um, on capital improvements, could you explain what that actually means and then maybe get into how Cupertino, maybe the policy as far as capital improvements sure. is? Well, capital improvements essentially, uh, uh, a probably simple way to define it is it's a major expenditure uh, that has a reasonably long life. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, a uh, a building, 
uh, public building would be a capital improvement. Um, building a new street would be a capital improvement. Maintaining that street would not be a capital improvement. That would be a, an ongoing kind of thing, repetitive maintenance type thing, so we don't consider that capital improvement. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've had a capital improvement program we developed uh, since I've been here. Uh, it's a five-year program. Uh, each year we reviewed it in uh, February uh, on our budget calendar and uh, we would uh, actually of course drop a year and add a year and the council would go over it thoroughly and uh, make any changes that uh, they deem necessary. And then once they adopted it, uh, that meant in effect that the coming years uh, capital improvements uh, were locked in and we would place those in the operating budget uh, or the total budget I should say uh, for that fiscal year and then of course the council would have a uh, another opportunity to change that if they so desired when they reviewed and adopted the the budget for that year. We have a one-year budget but the, op the capital improvement program is a five-year ongoing and it can be changed in future years. It's, it's not locked in, but it's a good guideline. Mm -hmm. And also we use it as a method of figuring our financing over a period of five years uh, in conjunction with a five-year uh, forecast. See, what do you see, um, could you touch upon some specific areas that the city has either completed as capital improvements or is currently working on? Maybe in the area of open space? Oh, okay. Well, we have, uh, the, um, we have in our general plan a uh, designated uh, areas for open space acquisition. And specifically this applies to the school system. In recent years, as you know, as the school population dropped, the, um, the um, school board uh, had decided to uh, cut back on some of the school facilities. And uh, so they surplused uh, certain school sites. Those school sites that were designated in our general plan as neighborhood parks, uh, we attempted to be in a position to acquire them as they become available. Um, we, in the beginning, we used uh, what's referred to as a Naylor bill. This is a method in which we could pay less than what the market would require, but there was only, uh, we could only utilize that up to 30% of the total land available. We've utilized all that now, and we must pay some kind of uh, market price for the land. The Wilson School site is up, and there is a portion of that site that the city hopes to acquire. Uh, we also have uh, the community center, uh, the new community center that uh, many people have waited for years for. Uh, under construction right now, as a matter of fact, the contractor uh, that was awarded the job is doing an outstanding job and has really got the project under, uh, very well underway. And if you happen to be driving on Stelling uh, uh, north of Stevens Creek, going north, you can see it on the, uh, on the west side. Uh, there's quite a bit of excavation going on and work going on there. Those are the two major projects in the way of open space. Uh, as you know, the bond issue effort we had failed. It, uh, it, I think it received around 54%, but it was required a two-thirds vote. Mm. And so uh, the, I, the, the plans to acquire lands with the money would have been made available under that uh, uh, are no longer available. So we, uh, uh, we do have a real problem from the standpoint of acquiring open space in the future because the price has gone up so high on land in this area. It's just unbelievable in the last six months to year how much it's risen. When we come back, we'll talk with Mr. Quinlan and ask him a few more questions on the future of Cupertino. In New York, the winters are tough and, and, and long. So, uh, so I spend a lot of hours in the gym. Many of the things I did on the basketball court while I was growing up were the results of dreaming them and or just laying back and then imagining myself floating in the air and thinking about the hundreds of different ways that I can make the ball go in. I worked very hard. Uh, let me tell you, I made a lot of sacrifices trying to be as good as I can be. And I did not want to do anything that was going to short circuit that drinking drugs it doesn't make sense i knew that they were counter to what i was working for it just doesn't make sense
We're back on Take 53 with Mr. Robert Quinlan, the recently retired Cupertino City Manager. Now, if you could give some advice to the incoming city manager, who is Donald Brown, do, what would you say to him? Well, mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of difficult. Actually, uh, I wouldn't want to say a lot because, seriously, I think the manager uh, has to do his or her own thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one of the worst things uh, that could happen would be the outgoing city manager give a lot of advice to the <laughs> incoming manager. I would suggest two things, however. One is that uh, that he utilize his staff as much as he can because he's got a good staff, and uh, to to try to utilize their their abilities. And finally, and I guess this is said somewhat just, uh, get to know the community val values as soon as possible, and certainly before you make the knife and fork circuit. <laughs> what do you see as some of the real key issues that are facing Cupertino in the next couple of years? Well, I think. Uh, I think fire and police issues will come about. We've, as you know, we've studied that over several years uh, on two occasions uh, very uh, much in depth to determine uh, what was the most economical way to go to provide the service. And we found that the present way we have, uh, being in the Central Fire District and with a uh, contract for police services, was the uh, most uh, cost-effective way to go. But I th that's, that may change, uh, mm -hmm. both uh, from the standpoint of outside the control of the city of Cupertino, that is state law or county uh, issues may change it. Uh, so that's, a, that's an important issue. Uh, the financial ability for the city to acquire and preserve open and park space I think is a major, major issue in, within the next five years. Well, I really appreciate you coming today and talking with us, and I wish you luck in all of your endeavors that you take in the future. Thank Hopefully you. to see you around here more. Thank you. I'd like to thank my guest, Mr. Robert Quinlan, the recently retired Cupertino City Manager, and thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Carol Frausto, saying please join me as I continue to explore the issues that shape your community on Take 53.